listen to this Dodge Charger or don't listen to it. It's not very loud. It's not clunking and banging and thumping like this bump here. No big deal. But it always wasn't like that. When I bought it, uh, after the thrill of having a Charger wore off, all I heard was thump, thump, bang, bang, pop, and it was driving me nuts. It's taken me about two years to figure out how to make this thing quiet, but it's finally quiet. I'm going to go over all the different things I had to do to make it quiet. So the first thing on this car that I noticed that drove me up the wall was the dashboard. The dashboard is free to bounce up and down a little bit. I don't know why, but when it bounced up and down, it would hit the dashboard and make a quite a rattling noise. So I went to Joanne's Fabric and I got some uh, craft foam. It's a quarter inch thick. It comes in an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I just cut some strips and you poke these between the windshield and the dashboard and then your dashboard won't rattle anymore. The second noise that started driving me nuts was the sunroof. As I drive down the street, I could hear a little buzzing noise. It really wasn't that loud, but it was really close to my head. And I would put my hand actually on this side, but it's the equivalent of this side. And I touch it here and it'd get quiet. And I'd take my hand away, it would start buzzing again. Put my hand here and it'd get quiet. So what I figured out is there's some bolts uh, between the headliner and the sunroof that bolt the sunroof to the car. Some of those bolts are loose, but I do not want to take this headliner out because that looks like a lot of work and I like my interior and I'd probably just screw it up. So we'll go outside the car and take a look. So to fix it, I went out here from the top with the sunroof open and I put RTV between my car, like here, and this aluminum frame and a little bit over here. And what I was doing is just kind of making a shock absorber kind of gluing it in place and now it doesn't buzz anymore and it didn't cost anything to fix and I didn't have to take anything apart. So now we're going to move on to the suspension. I think just about everybody that has a high mileage charger or challenger or 300 is going to have some rattles or squeaks or something going on in their front suspension. And uh, like what what's the cause? It's like there are lots of causes and this car had just about all of them all at the same time which makes it hard to figure out. Um, so just about everything on this car made noise except for the lower ball joints. So those are the only things I didn't replace uh, because they don't seem to be worn out. Everything else has been worn out. Um, so here's another thing. If you fix your, your charger or your challenger or whatever and you go to the auto parts store and you're going to buy some new parts, don't buy the store brand parts. They're probably junk. I bought several store brand parts and I put them on the car and within three to six months later they were shot, they're worn out, they're just junk and I had to take them back off. Do yourself a favor and buy some name brand parts. Uh, I've put Moog parts on the suspension and they've been good for like six months or a year, year and a half. That's not, you know, that's pretty short really but uh, the store brand stuff was total junk and came right back off. Um, so, if you've got a thumping, you know, a noisy suspension, probably the worst thing, the loudest thing, and a really common thing is the sway bar bushings. It sounds like a, it's a low pitch thump, and it's pretty loud. It's like somebody's got a big rubber sledgehammer, and they're banging on your, the bottom of your car every time you hit a bump. And, uh... So here's a little picture about what happens. So you've got your uh, sway bar under your car and it has brackets that bolt it to the car. And the brackets clamp around a rubber bushing and the rubber bushing clamps around the sway bar. And when it's new that rubber bushing is tight around the sway bar. But what happens is your car gets old, you get water in here and the water rusts the sway bar, it makes rust and then the rust wears out the rubber bushing and then also the rust acts like sandpaper and it it wears down the um, the sway bar too. So you go to fix your sway bar bushings and you'll put a new sway bar bushing in 
and right when you install it you'll think everything's good it'll be like this and about three months later you'll be like driving down the road going thump 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 it's like what the heck I just replaced these sway bar bushings what's going on well since the sway bar is too small the uh, you know these bushings are rubber and they kind of take a set you know they they creep very very slowly and this the bushing instead of being round will be an oval shape and the sway bar will be round and it's moving up and down inside that war the bushing and the reason is is because the sway bar is too small because it was rusty so what you want to do is take it you've got to figure out how to fill this gap up so you could just go out and buy a new sway bar I think you can buy them for hundred forty dollars uh, I was too cheap and I just wanted to fix my car it's so like, well, what am I going to do? So I uh, took sandpaper and I sanded up uh, the sway bar where the, the bushings go. I uh, got them good and clean, and then I wrapped, wrapped them up with uh, electric tape, just like wrapping a baseball bat handle. I just went across it once, and came back, you know, just two layers thick. I figure when, when you wrap it, you're overlapping the tape, and the tape is seven thousandths of an inch thick. So, you know, just going one direction, that's 14 thousandths of an inch. And then you go back the other direction, that's 28 thousandths of an inch. But if you, you know, you put it on the top and, and on the bottom as you go around the sway bar, so that will increase the thickness 56 thousandths of an inch. And that's pretty much enough to fill up this gap. So, uh, so then I put, after I put the tape, then I put uh, grease on the outside of the tape. Then I put my bushing back on and the bracket back on. And I did this about six months ago and the sway bar still doesn't thump and the tape hasn't fallen off yet. So it's at least a temporary win. Um, so that's the sway bar bushings. And also, once again, use uh, good sway bar bushings. I got some house brand sway bar bushings they were pretty bad they're too soft and and this oval shaped thing was really bad um, so then your upper ball joints are probably worn out and the way to replace the upper ball joint is to uh, you just have to get a new upper control arm because the ball joints part of the control arm and there's other people have videos on this I would probably do about what they say but um, one thing I'd like to comment is uh, the bolts that hold the control arms in the bolts go in from the inside one goes in this direction and one goes in this direction they have some funny shaped heads on them so that one person can install them you don't have to use a wrench on the inside of the wheel well they've got like these big ears and these big ears make it really hard to take these bolts out uh, of the control arm. You can go on the inside of the car and take the nuts off, but then you've got to try and push these out and they hit the spring. So in order to get mine out, I actually took a right angle grinder and I cut the control arm. And that way I could like get it sideways and get that bolt at an angle and pull it out because otherwise it was hitting on the spring. And then before I put them in, to make it easier to put them in, I took an angle grinder and I ground off part of this ear down here. It, it's not doing anything. So just shorten it up and that way you'll be able to slip in your, uh, your bolts into your uh, control arm a lot easier. Then the other thing is you absolutely have to get the bolts tight. If you don't get these bolts tight, you'll hear a popping noise, especially when you're braking or cornering uh, this control arm will start like uh, kind of going like this and when it does that because these bolts aren't clamping it to the car frame it, it'll every time it does that it'll make a popping noise so I'll open the hood and kind of point out something so the hardest bolts to get to are uh, these ones back here so here's the the nut for the upper control arm this one's pretty easy to get to 
But there's another one on the back side here where you're not going to be able to see it with the camera. But it's way down in here. Um, and what you have to do is just, you don't have to remove this piece, just pull all four of these uh, things. Uh, they just pry out. <clears throat> pry these two pins out, take this uh, little plastic piece off. And then there'll be two bolts here, and there, there's a big piece of metal that runs from here to the other side of the car. You have to take the bolts out over there too. And you don't have to completely remove this bar, just kind of pick it up and slide it sideways a little bit. And then with this piece off, you'll be able to get a wrench down to this uh, nut back here. <clears throat> and it's super important. That's the one I screwed up on because it's hard to get to. And I didn't get it tight. And I had to listen to it make banging noises for six months till uh, I finally figured out what it was today. And I tightened it up and the noise is gone. Um, let's see here. What else wears out? So the lower control arm ball joint will probably be worn out. It's fairly easy to replace. Some people call it a lower control arm, and some parts stores will call it a lower tension arm or a lower tension strut. So it's kind of hard to, to figure out what part to buy. Once again, the first one I replaced, I bought a cheap one, a store brand part. It lasted about six months. I'm like, what's that banging noise? I thought I fixed this. And what do you know? It was loose again. Hmm. So the second one I put on was a Moog, and it's lasted about a year and a half. Uh, the tie rod ends will probably be worn out. Both of the tie rod ends on this car have been replaced. The, the first one was replaced by a previous owner, and the one over here was replaced by me, and it was definitely worn out. That one, if you're turning the steering wheel, you just wiggle the steering wheel back and forth a little bit, and you could hear click, 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 click. You know, you didn't have to move it very much, and that was the, the tie rod ends. The sway bar end links were uh, worn out. Those are one of the first things I replaced, and... Uh, once again, I, I bought house brand parts. I put them on, and about six months later, it's like, <laughs> there's that noise again. <laughs> and so one of the two sway bar end links was no good. I replaced it with a Moog part. No, no problems with the Moog part. And one of the cheap sway bar ends is okay, but one of them wasn't. So just another, don't bother with the cheap parts. Um... The struts, I replaced a strut today. I thought the strut was making popping noises. Uh, I know now it wasn't. It was actually the loose uh, upper control arm bolt. But, um, so with 150,000 miles, the struts were not worn out. So don't blame your struts automatically. I'm not saying it couldn't be a strut, but, um, Make sure, I've, I've just heard from other people, that make sure these three bolts here are tight. If these, sorry, nuts, if these nuts come loose, your strut can like move around and that'll make a lot of noise. So make sure these are tight. Make sure these bolts on both ends of this uh, cross brace are tight because uh, this brace can also rattle. Uh, another thing that was making noise is my front bumper cover. Let's go look at the front bumper. The previous owner of this car, I don't know who, somebody probably hit a curb or, you know, a big concrete barricade in a parking lot or something, and they broke this, uh, this bumper cover. It's got a couple cracks in here. And that, that allowed this bumper cover to kind of flop around, so if you kind of hit it, it'd make a lot of noise. So I uh, got um, just some one inch wide strips of aluminum that are a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I got them on the back side of this uh, bumper cover and I pop riveted them on. And there's a bunch more underneath that you can't see. But basically I had to repair the bumper cover so it didn't uh, thump. I also put, you know, this bumper cover, there's a metal frame inside the bumper. And I put some more of that craft foam, I put it on top of the metal frame, 
but below where this bumper cover rests on the frame so it can't uh, can't make any loud banging noises one of the last things that, or maybe one of the first things but uh, you should check is your uh, inner wheelhouse the inner wheelhouse is it's made out of rubber which is nice because it doesn't rust but it's held in with these little uh, they're kind of like plastic rivets you push them in they look like screws they've got a Phillips head on them but it's really a type of rivet just make sure that none of these has, have fallen out because if it does then uh, this wheelhouse can come loose <clears throat> and they can flop around and they can make a lot of noise and uh, I know on my dad's Dodge Journey on the back that's what happened to his it just came loose and it was flopping around so he just kind of pulled it back into place and I don't know what he put in it some some sort of something so it doesn't flop anymore and now his journey is quiet so uh, those are all my thoughts on how to make your Dodge Charger or Challenger or Chrysler 300 not so noisy uh, hopefully this is helpful so on my car looking from the inside here's the funny bolts that I was talking about with the ears on them those are hard to get out because they want to crash into the spring so cut your control arm then you can turn turn this sideways and change the angle of the, the bolt so it will go through a, a gap in the spring here's a new strut that I didn't need this is a new upper control arm this is a new lower control arm some people call this the lower tension strut this is the ball joint that was worn out this is a new tie rod end the old one was worn out uh, and this is the lower ball joint down here the lower ball joint was not worn out and here's the uh, Here's a sway bar bushing. This is a Moog sway bar bushing, and this is, uh, you can see my electrical tape sticking out. So, it's quiet. And one last thing. Now that I'm all done getting this quiet, and I know how many different parts I've replaced, I should have gotten a kit all at once. Uh, Summit, I think, or uh, Rock Auto sells a kit from Moog with all the parts. I should have just bought them all at the same time, but that's hindsight but maybe if you just bought yourself a used charger and you want to make it quiet you'll know you probably have to replace just about everything <laughs>